Hello, everyone. My name is Ned Dennison. I'm the chair first of the International Marathon Swimming Hall of Fame. We have a very interesting story with two people tonight. And uh, a lot of uh, couples will uh, have long discussions about the uh, the uh, the amount of training that goes into being successful in the sport. Uh, the couple in front of us have a very unique approach. So I'll let them introduce each other and then uh, talk a little bit about their careers to start. Um, so I'm Helen, Helen Batley, and I'm Jason. <laughs> um, so yes, I've been swimming since, well, I, I've, I've all been swimming forever, really. Um, I was a pool swimmer as a kid, um, left it for a number of years, but then returned in about 2010. I started, um, started back open water swimming, um, and I've done a number of marathon swims, um, did English Channel 2012. Um, and, um, yeah, met Jason 2013 and done lots of other swims since, and we've also got a little girl as well. So, um, yes, we, we juggle it, um, <laughs> between us, um, so that we can both still keep swimming. Okay. Helen, you need to, sorry, Helen, uh, in addition to doing freestyle, you do something else out there. That would be interesting for yeah. people. Okay. Yes. I, I switched to swimming butterfly a number of years ago. Um, so yes, I kind of, having done quite a few marathon freestyle swims, English Channel, Catalina, Gibraltar Straits, you know, the, the usual Menorca Channel. Um, uh, yes, I, I just needed a new way of challenging myself. Um, so yes, in, uh, around 2017, 2018, I switched to Butterfly. Um, I did, I say I did, I, I tried to do Windermere Butterfly, um, took two attempts, um, that was 2018. Um, and yes, it, it was a challenge, and uh, that's that's where I'm I'm still going now, basically. Tell us the ones you've been successful at recently, please. It's, as so, I'm pulling it out of you. <laughs> okay, so um, yeah, it's uh, first it was Windermere 2018, and then 2022 I did the Bonifacio Strait, although that's unofficial as I didn't have a stroke observer on board. I know I did it. Um, <laughs> uh, so I was unsuccessful on the St. Lucia Channel. Um, it's very windy and wavy over there. Um, and I wasn't very well at the time either. So combination of factors. Um, but then I went on to do Jersey to France um, Butterfly um, in 2022. And then this year um, I started out, I did Galway Bay at the start of July um, and then did um, Around Jersey um, at the end of July. And I've got a couple more lined up as well. So um, it's a busy year. It's a busy year. So I'm, I'm off to Fastnet in September and um, Cape Town for False Bay in November. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's okay, where we stand. Okay, Jason, you can go now. Okay. <laughs> so I, I wasn't much of a pool swimmer. I, I did a bit when I was younger. Um, and then I didn't really swim until I was in my early 30s. 40s. Uh, my, my first sort of open water experience was a, a Great East swim in a wetsuit uh, in, in 2012. Uh, I can't remember whether it was one mile or two miles, uh, but uh, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it and I literally went home and called some channel pilots and said, I'm going to swim the channel uh, in two, two summers' time. Uh, and, and that's what I did and swam the channel in 2014. Uh, 2013 I met Helen we we both as it happens swum the length of Windermere front crawl uh, in August 2013 which is a fairly sort of popular warm-up the year before you do the channel uh, and we, we met each other sort of at the end having both done the swim uh, and and then through the the miracles of Facebook managed to uh, be in contact after that and uh, quite a lot happened after that uh, we ended up getting uh, married and we ended up having a little girl Jess in in 2017 and that kind of sort of prompted a, a bit of a change in how, how we did things because we knew that we weren't both going to be able to do all the training that, that a big long marathon swimming in, involved so we both just decided to chill out for a while Helen took up the butterfly I took up the backstroke uh, and you know, we, we, we decided then after the, after that first year to, to take it in turns uh, where, where, where one would do lots of training one year and the other would do lots of training the year after. 
That's it, because in 2018, you swam Windermere backstroke, I swam Windermere butterfly. And even just for the length of Windermere, I was feeling under-trained. And I think it became quite apparent that we were both struggling to get enough training in um, just to prepare ourselves for Windermere. It wasn't going to work very well like that going forward. So I think that's where we decided right. we were going to start alternating. Um, so I had one, one glorious year of, of, of backstroking in 2019. Uh, I think I, I swam around Jersey that year, uh, backstroke, uh, and I had a go at swimming the channel, uh, but I was pulled uh, about five kilometres away from Cap Grenay, heading north quite quickly uh, into, a, into a freshening wind over tide, and, and I think the pilot said, right, no, we've had enough of this, uh, you, you're getting out sun after 15 hours, so, uh, and then I, then I actually hung up my backstroke togs and went back to front crawl. Uh, whereas Helen carried on with the butterfly. Mm -hmm. You you had a splash in Catalina, Jason, if I remember right, worth mentioning. Oh yes, yeah. So in, in fifteen, uh, I went and did Catalina, having been there the year before with Helen, who who who'd done it. But I I then started uh, my sort of uh, two way career. Uh, I thought I'd go and do a two way Catalina, uh, which I was successful in, but really only by the skin of my teeth. Uh, it was about 28 hours and I was really not in very good shape at the end of that swim at all. Uh, I think it took 12 hours going over to the island and, and 16 coming back. But one of my shoulders was pretty, pretty much gone. Uh, and uh, yeah, I, I, I limped home pretty much with, with one arm uh, and bits of breaststroke and backstroke going on in there as well. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I guess later on, uh, I've done a few few more two ways. Uh, and, and it's kind of been been something that I've, I've actually quite enjoyed doing since. And recently, two-way Fastnet, if I remember right. Yes. Yeah, you, so, yeah. you two were impossible. I should have printed out <laughs> your careers and given them to you. Okay. So, so yeah. So, in, in twenty was it 2021? 20, uh, I did a two-way. So, in, in uh, Jersey to France and then back again, which is like a massive great big circle uh, that the tide helps you with. Uh, it's like a 16 hour swim. And then last year was my, my year, 2023. So, so I, I started off with a two way fast net, uh, which again was about 13 and a half hours. Uh, and then followed it up in August with a, with a two way English channel, uh, which was about 20, just under 26 hours, uh, in, in August. Uh, Jason told us about his first, uh, open water mile in the wetsuit. Helen, your 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 first open water mile and and how did you go from a mile to dreaming about longer well that's it i can't actually remember when my first open water mile was so i it may have been in dover harbor i started in dover harbor i can't even remember whether it was 2009 or 2010 but i do know i did the the first proper open water event i did was um the dark 10k in um, 2010 um which I think was the first year it ran, actually. Um, it was a good swim. Um, so obviously it assisted, so it wasn't quite like a 10K. But, um, yeah, that was my – and I was skinned. I've never owned a wetsuit. Um, so I right from the outset, I, I went down to Frida down in Dover Harbour, I remember, <laughs> having been in a pool. I'd, I'd even already signed up to the English Channel at that point. I was adamant I was going to do it. Um, and I went down there, and she said, right, swim over there. And I got it, and I thought – Ooh, this is going to be a challenge. <laughs> yeah, it was cold. I mean, that was September as well. And it was cold and it, yes, um, it was murky and nothing like a swimming pool, basically. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, no, it's, um, it's amazing how um, your pool swimmers don't really sort of comprehend the, uh, the difference and how, how huge it is. But... So, so, Helen, this has been your year. Jason, t tell us about the amount of training you can do in Helen's year? Is it, is it 10K a week instead of 25K a week? Uh, how does it work? Yeah, so uh, it, it's kind of about half, I guess, of what I normally do. Now, I, I don't do as much training as, as, as some people would do. So uh, another swimmer asked me about this a while ago, and he said, well, how, how much training did you do in, in the like 10 months before you, you did any of your big swims and I, I went and looked it up because I had an, an XL um, and I think the most I've ever done was like 900 kilometers in the previous 10 months and I've never done a million meters in a year which is a thing 
So some people do it and they say, oh, I've done a million, million meters. I've, I've never done it. Uh, and interestingly, uh, for the two-way English channel last year, uh, did uh, did less than I did training for my first one-way English channel. So I'd say it's probably uh, 10, 12K a week. I might do in, and mostly in the pool uh, because, you know, Helen, since the beginning of May, uh, has been in, in Dover a lot or Ireland a lot or Jersey a lot. Uh, so so basically the weekends are are the person whose year it is. Uh, and uh, yeah, and the person whose year it isn't, uh, you know, basically spends the, spends the weekend with, with, with Jess and uh, looking after, the, you know, what's going on at home. I mean, the, the official line is from the end of September or well, the end of September is handover time ready for next season. Um, but the person, the, the person whose season it is has um, three mornings a week plus the weekends. And the person who's off season just has two mornings and anywhere else they can squeeze a swim in. <laughs> Basically, that, that's how we work it. So, so the handover used to be four hands on the baby. Then it was probably a gentle toss to the, this, this just now high five you in, at the end of September. Mommy <laughs> out, daddy in. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much. Yeah, I mean, you 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 know, Jess, she's seven now, and uh, she's she's developing quite a lot of sass, uh, and she's she's grown very used to talking with grown up swimmers, and uh, she she really enjoys it. Mm -hmm. So, Jason, I'm a great believer in a concept called big swim memory, and I think when people start their marathon career, they're they're frightened. Um, they may have done their six hour qualifier, but never seven hours. I, I tell the story, I'll, I'll leave the name out, but that he will be embarrassed when he hears the story of a, of a swimmer in the English Channel whose who stroke went completely, completely gone at eight hours. And his father stopped him on the boat with a couple of choice words and asked him what the he was doing. And the swimmer turned to him and he said, I don't know, I never swam this long before. <laughs> so... <laughs> When you're not doing uh, your million meters a year, tell us this concept of big swim memory, you know, two-way Catalina, two-way English Channel. Does it kick in at a certain point and you, and you remember all the prayers as a child? You, you think about your reputation, you think about something and you go, okay, well, I, you know, I remember how to do this. Yeah, I, I, I think so. I, I think once you've done a few big swims, uh, most of the mental stuff isn't there. And both the the, mus the muscle memory and the mental memory come in. So when you get in for your, for your next big one, you know you, you're a lot more chilled uh, than than you would have been. So I think even though I'm, you know, I'm in my mid fifties now, and I was in my mid forties when I first did a bit, you know, the English Channel. I think I'm probably a better, more chilled swimmer than, than I was, you know, when I was 10, 10 years younger. And actually, the the English Channel two way last summer felt straightforward enough now i had nice conditions admittedly uh but i, I wasn't uh, i wasn't really uh worrying before it i was fairly chilled and just just got it done so i, I think there's an awful lot of mem memory uh, in there both both mental and, and physical so you two are sitting in the island of jersey right now where uh imshoff will have its uh ceremony in may next year uh, do do tell people what your what your plan has been in the island of Jersey because I think your plan is fascinating. Well, this time round, um, yeah, we're here to do a medley relay, um, or at least that was the idea. Unfortunately, the weather's not looking great, but of course, um, me being the butterfly and Jason with his backstroke experience, um, it it seems well, it's never been done before, so why not? Um, I think it was a plan that was hatched up when I was. Um, on my, my way back in the boat from my Jersey to France. Um, <laughs> it was pretty much a done deal. Um, so yes, we were going to do a medley relay of myself doing butterfly. We've got a couple of others that are over here, um, but um, yes, unfortunately. I, I, I remember reading that this had been done between two and four in the afternoon on the 7th of July, about five years ago. It's only 205 kilometers or something, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's about 60 i think <laughs> okay so yeah so the medley relay around the island of jersey which i i think evan morrison puts it down at 51k or something like that but um i'm just surprised that it's not been done before yeah, who, who would imagine it just somebody hadn't knocked it off one day with their two mm. three friends 
the funniest thing is find, finding breaststrokers actually because um uh, I think I probably know more butterflies than I know breaststrokers, which is an interesting fact. I, mean, I don't know that many backstrokers, but fortunately I have one of those in hand. So, <laughs> and Jason, is it, um, can we talk publicly about some of your plans for next year? And then Helen, I'm going to ask you about 2026, or are you keeping them close to your chest? No, <laughs> uh, it's, it's, it's fine. Uh, so, so I've, I've got like double Catalina and double English under my belt. So I'm going to go and do, uh, hopefully, depending on the timings, because we don't know when when it happens yet. Uh, Forty bridges, so twice twice round Manhattan, uh, and if, if I can get that one done, that'll be the double triple crown or the triple double whatever whatever you call it, uh, the the triple crown twice. Um, and the other one that I have planned and agreed and booked is is the St George's Channel, uh, which is otherwise known as the Irish Sea. Uh, so I'm going to swim from uh, Hollyhead to Dublin. So the double triple has only been done by uh, uh, two others, um, if I remember right, Liz Fry. I'm sorry, Courtney, Courtney uh, sure. Moat Pulps. Uh, sorry, Courtney. And also uh, Stevie Stevenark from France. Uh, right. He did the triple Catalina, but we, we, we let him get away with calling it a double for the purposes of this. <laughs> And St. George's has never been done before. Uh, two relays have done it. And two soloers had a, had a, had a go at it before. So it would be a first ever. And as our, our honoree David Udevin used to tell me, he said, um, when you set a speed record for sure, somebody's going to break it. When you're the first, nobody can ever take it away from you. And he went on to do, I don't know, 30 first ever swims around the world. And then, Helen, you have to, you have to top that at 26. Um, sea of Tranquility has never been done in dogs, <laughs> one breath, butterfly. <laughs> That's the thing. I mean, these days, because I am doing butterfly, um, the distance is slightly limited um, because I'm, I'm much slower, much, much slower than uh, I am with my freestyle. Um, however, um, all, all of this stuff I'm doing this year is it's basically building up and leading up to um, an English Channel butterfly in 2026. So that is really the only thing I've got on the cards at the moment. I'll probably be doing some other training swims or fun swims along the way just to, um, yes, keep, um, keep stretching myself. But, um, yeah, that's, that's booked for September 2026. And already, you know, I'm thinking about how that might work because although we sort of have our handovers and ha how it works with Jess and so on, um, throughout school holidays, I'm slightly limited with my, my training as to, to how I am when Jess is at school. So, um, yes, it's um, uh, it's already try to, trying to work out the, the family um, logistics with all of that. But uh. and, and give us a give us a bit of a description of the challenge of going from freestyle to butterfly. And then I guess the question I'm just going to ask is, do you like go to Pilates in different towns and cities as this unassuming you know lady with a seven-year-old child and they go we're going to do a little core strength now and you and you like lift 400 kilograms with your feet while while you're laying on your back well it's interesting I, I i i always thought i was stronger than i actually am to be honest so i um yeah freestyle i, I was i was fast but it was more through technique than strength you know i had fantastic coaching as a kid um and, um, you know, it stood me in good stead with all of my strokes. Um, as you might know, I also did Windermere backstroke and breaststroke last year just to complete the set. Um, and that's all testament to the, the coaching I had that meant that all of my strokes, are, you know, they're very legal, they um, are reasonably efficient. Um, but butterfly was always my weakest stroke. And that's what made it the extra challenge. You know, no one wants to do butterfly, do they? <laughs> um, so, yeah, it was... Actually, when I was pregnant, I actually found it easier doing butterfly because when you're doing freestyle, you have to rotate. And funnily enough, as your body changes when you're pregnant, it's harder to rotate. So I, I found myself doing more and more butterfly when I was pregnant. Um, and it kind of stuck a little after that as well. So um, that was part of the thing that might have sort of um, sent me a bit in that direction. But um, yeah, I mean, physically, it, it is tough and Certainly, when I tried to do Windermere Butterfly the first time, I mean, I, I, I got within about a mile or two of the end and I just completely died. Um, 
but I, I think it's the same regardless of what stroke you do I think you just need to build up that fitness over years I'm not talking over weeks or months over years you build up that muscular fitness and that muscle memory and so on because I, I think that's why I, I always said even with my freestyle one of my best swims was in 2015 after I'd been doing open water for you know a good five years because you know my, my body had just got used to that's what I was doing um so I think butterfly now I'm feeling a much stronger than I was, you know, back in 2018. Um, but I, I'm always aware the amount of strain it puts on my body. I often have problems with my forearms, not my shoulders, strangely, forearms and, you know, other peripherals. So I've, I have started going to the gym just literally about a year ago. I started going to the gym um, to start building up um you know, strength. And I just didn't realize how weak some of my muscles actually were, you know, they might be sort of efficient in certain ways, but you know, I don't have the strength I thought I had. Um, and I think possibly the fact that I've got through this year relatively uninjured is, you know, testament to, you know, the work I've been doing in the gym as well. I think, I think gym work, certainly as you get older, you know, I'm, I'm not spring chicken anymore, um, is, is essential for, um, avoiding injury. So I'm not sure um, women of your age are particularly like listening to this interview. They're going to go. So she was doing a lot of butterfly when she was pregnant. And now that she's had the baby, she's done so much butterfly. She's probably got abs like supermodel. Um, <laughs> yeah. So if you get an elbow in the shower, you, you know what's happened. <laughs> so so I, I can just remember something. This is the week before you mm -hmm. actually gave birth. Ellen was still knocking out a mile of butterfly without stopping in the swimming pool the week before giving birth, which I, at the time, I thought was just insane. And the birth didn't happen in the pool. No. <laughs> sure. <laughs> no, although she is a water baby. <laughs> so, listen, I want to thank you very much for your time. I, I, I talked to a, a number of swimmers, um, and one of the big, big problems in the sport is that... Uh, at a certain point, uh, one of the spouses, one of the partners, kind of is accused of not remembering the children's names, um, hasn't done a school run in a year and a half or two years, and then they go off to their English channel and get weathered out, and they come home, and their partner says, if you want to stay married, you know, here's the list, the honeydew list of things that you will be doing for the next well. So you two have a very interesting approach of, of of splitting the time, splitting the training, splitting the load. Uh, so thank you for that. Um, what I will say to everybody is uh, we've done a couple of hundred interviews like this uh, with uh, with honorees, with swimmers from around the world. We've got a library with more than 100 videos and uh, feel free to subscribe. So thank you very much, uh, two of you. Thank you. Thanks, Beth. Thanks, Lynn.